Welcome to our tutorial for using on-demand reporting within Brightmetrics Shortail Reporting Services. This is one of several video tutorials we've done to help in using the Shortail Reporting Services. You'll be able to see other available videos at www.brightmetrics.com forward slash support or you can use your browser to navigate to our main website at www.brightmetrics.com and click the support link in the upper right hand corner. This tutorial will cover navigation within on-demand reporting. To learn how to create on-demand reports, please see our video titled Creating and Editing On-Demand Reports. When you select on-demand reports from the sidebar menu, what you see will depend on your permission level and if you have any saved or shared reports. If you have permissions to create reports, you will see the Create Reports area and the Saved Report Templates area. If not, you will only see the Saved Report Templates area. If you have no reports saved or shared with you, this will say None. Otherwise, any reports you've created and saved or that have been shared with you will show here. We'll cover the Create Reports area in the Creating and Editing On Demand Reports video. Let's first select a report from the Saved Report Templates area. We start in the View Report screen. Here we're asked to confirm any unpinned parameters and we are shown any pin parameters, but cannot change them in view mode. We can preview the report, email the report, or if we have edit permissions on this report, we can edit it. A note on pinned and unpinned report parameters. When you create a report, you'll set parameters. These might be the date range for the report, the users on the report, the work group or groups on the report, or nearly any other available data dimension. You can then pin some or all of those parameters if you like. This means that when a user views that report, the pinned parameters are fixed and we will not ask them if they'd like to change them when viewing the report. For unpinned parameters, the defaults you've set when you created the reports are there, but the user can change them. As an example, if you have a report that you run on workgroup queues and you want the user with whom you are sharing the report to be able to modify most of the parameters but only be able to run the report against a certain workgroup, you could leave all parameters unpinned except for the workgroup filter and give them the view only permission on this report. Going back to the view screen, if we select preview report, we see the report as it was designed with the unpinned filters set as I have configured them. In this view, I can perform the familiar drill down at any level of the report all the way down to our cradle to grave report. If I drill down on the name here, I get a detailed view and I keep the groupings on the dates. Whereas if I drill down on the total field, I get the same calls in the detail view, but no longer have the grouping by date. This is helpful if I want to look at the data as a whole and do overall column sorts. And finally, I can drill down on any date and see the detail only for that date. And I can always still drill down on any individual call and get a cradle to grave report on that call. Also from this report view, I can perform a print preview, which opens the print view in a separate browser tab. I can now print it to a printer or a PDF, or I can export it to a CSV file capable of being imported into Excel or another analysis tool. If I select email report, it asks me for an email address to which I want to send the report, as well as an optional text message. It will send the report as a PDF with the message in the body of the email. And if I have edit permissions, I'll see this edit mode button, which again, we'll cover in another video. Going back to the Saved Report Templates area, there are two icons. The first is for sharing the report, and again, this is permission dependent. Clicking on this icon shows you the screen in which you can share this report with other users in your company or modify the permissions on those reports. You can set their permission level to View, Modify, or Share. Selecting View will give them the ability to view the report as you have created it. If you've created unpinned parameters, they'll be able to modify them, but if all your parameters are pinned, they will just be able to view the report as you've created it, with the ability to drill down on the report.
if you give a user modify permissions on a report, they'll be able to enter edit mode on that report and change it however they like, potentially creating a completely different report from it. And finally, giving share permissions means they have both the ability to edit the report completely as well as the ability to share it with other users. If you'd like to modify the permissions for somebody that already has access to the report, you can simply do that here by clicking the appropriate box. To remove their access to the report, you can select None in the column next to their name. If you're adding permissions for a new person on the report, you can locate their email address in the drop-down box. It's sorted alphabetically. After you've located the user, select the permission level and hit Add User. You can now see them in the permissions on the report, and it will show up in their saved report templates area. The other icon next to the report name is the report scheduling icon. When you click on this icon, it'll show any schedules that are currently applied to this report. You can edit those schedules, or you can create a new schedule that will be in addition to any other schedules currently set up. You can see that for this report, I have a current schedule applied to it to email it to me at 8 a.m. every Monday morning with a filter of the last seven days. I'll set up a new filter for this report. I'm going to send this report to Andrew Gaskell, our CTO, as well as an address outside the company. I'm going to have this delivered at 8 a.m. on the first of every month. You can see that if I'm sending this to a user in a different time zone, I can have the report scheduled to be delivered according to their time zone. I'm going to filter this for the last 30 days. Note that in the Filter Choices section you'll be able to configure whatever unpinned parameters you have in the report separately for each schedule. In addition, I'll put a note in the email that they will get each time that will have the message as to what the report is. When I hit Save, I can now see the new schedule I've just created. Note that anywhere we email reports, we send it in a PDF format and obviously don't have drill down capabilities. If a user requires the ability to drill down into a report, you'll need to share the report with them and they'll have to access that from the web. Thank you for viewing another in our series of tutorials on Brightmetrics Shortail Reporting Services. You can see other tutorials on our website at brightmetrics.com forward slash support. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at support at brightmetrics.com.